Hey guys, it's Jeff and today we have an awesome video for you guys. We are covering 100 plus new features and changes found in iOS 13 exclusively. So if you are pumped for this video, definitely leave a like on the video and also get subscribed because we have more content coming in the next couple of hours and even tomorrow with the iPhone 11 Pro launch that we'll be covering the Pro and Pro Max unboxings and the Apple Watch Series 5 unboxing as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We have a lot to talk about. Let's just jump right in with 100 plus new features and changes found within iOS 13. Okay guys, so on the left hand side here we have iOS 12.4.1 and on the right we have iOS 13.0. That is the official release version of iOS 13. So we are going to be doing a full list of new features and changes uh, going from iOS 12 to iOS 13. And let's start up with the setup process. Now, as you go throughout the setup process from iOS 12 to iOS 13, you'll notice a very different process here as there's a lot more options for dark mode and other new features as well. So you'll see that there are different UI changes going on in the setup process from iOS 12 going to iOS 13, a lot of which you didn't have in the setup process in iOS 12. Now, I just wanted to get this over with, but you will be seeing a ton of new app cards. And basically these app cards are showing you what's new with these specific apps and kind of what to expect when using them, just highlighting the app in general. So you will be seeing new app cards for the App Store, Calendar, Photos, Maps, Reminders, Notes, Stocks, Apple News, Books, Podcast, Apple TV, Health App, Home, Find My App, Shortcuts, iTunes Store, Voice Memos, Messages, and Apple Music. Now these are all uh, the apps that will be affected by the iOS 13 update. If you have like any third-party apps or anything like that, they may also have app cards for the iOS 13 update, but these are specific to Apple and were specifically updated for the iOS 13 release. Now, the first thing that you'll see is kind of a bolder lock screen here, a bolder font on the right hand side in iOS 13. You can see that the time is just a little bit bolder than what we see on the left hand side in iOS 12. And then also on that lock screen, if you have any notifications um, or a lack of notifications, as you can see here, no older notifications on both sides, you can see that on iOS 13, that is placed just a little farther down um, than on iOS 12. Now you can also see that we have a very different now playing menu here on the lock screen and this will be apparent on the lock screen and in the control center. Uh, basically the controls are just a lot more modern looking. Um, we have still a very translucent look to uh, the now playing menu but it's a little bit different and I really do like the contrast between the background and the foreground here of the now playing um, kind of uh, presentation here. Uh, now it will change based upon your background so do take note of that. But so far, the now playing menu looks a lot different from what it did before. Uh, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this change in the comment section down below. Let me know how you like it. Now, let's go on to the settings app where we actually have a ton of changes here. And first, uh, we'll go ahead and go into the about menu uh, on both phones here just to check out what we're running. Um, we'll verify that we are running iOS 12.4.1 on the left and iOS 13 on the right. And if we go and tap on those versions, you can see that we have very different build numbers. So uh, for iOS 12.4.1, our build number is 16G102. And for software version iOS 13, we have 17A577. Now, if we go down just a little bit here, uh, you can see that we do have a change in our modem firmware, quite a big one here, in fact. Uh, so if we go to the modem firmware, you can see that we have um, on iOS 12.4, 4.1, a modem firmware of 1.06.02, and on the right-hand side, iOS 13, a 2.00.01. Dash two, So that's kind of like the second version of that modem firmware uh, that was being tested with the overall beta releases for iOS 13. So a big change here in modem firmware and that will likely improve on the overall LTE quality and signal that you get on your iPhone. 
Now, if we go back out into the main menu here of the settings app, you can see that we do have a very slight change. Uh, you can see that we do have a little bit more of a translucent look to the search bar up there, a little bit bigger um, spyglass icon there at the top. And then also the arrangement of the menus here is just a little bit different. The iCloud menu is pushed all the way to the top instead of what we are seeing on iOS 12. Now, if we go into the menu here for iCloud, you can see that we do have a new option for Find My. Uh, so you'll have that new menu there. We do not have the Share My Location, um, as you can see here on the left with iOS 12, that is actually included in the Find My menu. So if we go into this menu, uh, you can see that we do have an option to share your location within that Find My menu. Now, the next change can be found in the Wi-Fi menu where you can see that the check mark for your connected Wi-Fi source is a lot bigger, a lot more apparent. So you can go ahead and see exactly which Wi-Fi network you're connected to. Now, the check mark is also uh, not in bold as what you would see on the left on iOS 12. So it's a little bit thinner, which I personally like. Let me know what your thoughts are on this change in the comment section down below. Uh, we are seeing these check mark changes being brought to kind of like the full UI going throughout iOS 13. These are apparent throughout kind of all the options that we're seeing in iOS 13, but more specifically in the settings app. Now, if you take a look at the cellular icon um, on the left and you compare it to what's on the right in iOS 13, you can actually see that we have a little bit darker shade of green on the right here with iOS 13. And we'll be seeing that a little bit later, but just a very slight change in color for the cellular menu icon. Now, if we go into the do not disturb menu, you can see that we actually have a very different look to the scheduled menu here. So if you go and tap scheduled and turn that on, uh, bedtime is now included in uh, the do not disturb kind of setting. So that's automatic in iOS 13, but we do have a new option to dim the lock screen when do not disturb is turned on. So that's a very different look to what we were seeing before in the do not disturb menu. Now, if we go into the screen time menu option in the settings app, you can see that we have a very different menu from what we were seeing on iOS 12. So it does look a little bit more modern here. Uh, the updated uh, kind of sign for today is now at the bottom versus what it was at the top. Um, we have a very different menu option here. So uh, previously you'd go into uh, the menu there to kind of see the full graph. And now it's all available through the uh, kind of front screen here. You can go into see all activity, which will give you a much more detailed view than what we were seeing before as well. So you just have a lot more of a detailed view and Apple as has actually changed some UI options here to kind of reflect that very modern look that they're going for in iOS 13. So just a little bit more information here, a little bit more detailed graphs as you go throughout the menus. If we back out here, you can see that um, everything is just a little bit bigger on the right with iOS 13 versus iOS 12. So a lot bigger menu options, a lot bigger graphs, just so you can see more and more of the information versus what we were seeing in iOS 12, where everything was just a little bit smaller and kind of a little bit harder to see. Now in the control center menu, we actually have new options. So if we go ahead and scroll down here and show you those options, uh, you can see that we do have a new TV remote option um, that has been modified for iOS 13, a QR code reader. So the scan QR code has now been uh, changed to QR code reader. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later and how that looks. We have a new dark mode uh, theme launcher. So that is really cool. That's in the control center. We'll be going over that in just a little bit. And then we have a new kind of icon for guided access. So if you take a look at the left, the icon is in blue and on the right, it's in uh, kind of like that dark theme color. So that's really nice to see that uh, we are having some change more to the darker theme, but those are all the changes with the control center. And we'll kind of get back to those in just a little bit and kind of show you guys the differences in the control center menus and how it looks in iOS 13. Now, if we go into the display and brightness menu, you'll see that we do have a very different looking display and brightness menu specific to iOS 13 because we have the new light and dark theme option. So in the uh, display and brightness menu for iOS 13, you can go ahead and switch to dark mode and that will automatically switch to dark mode. You don't need to restart your phone or anything like that. And that will activate the full dark mode theme throughout the UI for iOS 13. So this looks absolutely 
absolutely amazing. Let me know what your thoughts are on the dark mode theme in the comment section down below. So far, I'm really enjoying it. I really like it, um, but a lot of people don't like it, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I think that the ease of changing from light to dark theme is really, really cool, and I really like it. Now, below the light and dark theme option, you have an automatic option. So you can go ahead and control everything manually, or you can turn on this automatic option, which will give you the option to change from light to dark theme um, on sunset to sunrise, or you can actually set a custom schedule uh, to your liking. I personally just use sunset to sunrise just because because that's the easiest and uh, typically those changes do come at the perfect time. Now, if we scroll down to the very bottom here, everything pretty much has remained the same, but if we go into the display zoom menu, you can see a big, big change here in kind of how Apple is presenting uh, this menu. So we no longer have the two tabs at the top for standard and zoomed. They're actually shown on the same page. And uh, on the left here, we had different options where you can see kind of different um, scenarios of which the um, view would change. So that's really cool there. But actually on the right, they're doing that all through a special animation. And that's really, really cool. It automatically plays. You don't have to swipe through anything. So a very different look to the display zoom menu in uh, the uh, display and brightness menu here with iOS 13. I personally think this looks a whole lot better and uh, is definitely looking a little bit more modern than what we're seeing in iOS 12. Now, as you can see here, we do have an added accessibility menu. This was previously in the general menu in iOS 12, but has been taken out of that menu and placed on the main screen here simply because it has a whole lot more options to work with and uh, definitely has a lot of options that you might want to go ahead and check check out. Uh, now it does have uh, the kind of all the options that we were seeing before for the accessibility menu. Um, voice control has been revamped. So you definitely want to check that out. I did a full demo that will be linked in the video description down below. But this menu has definitely changed than what we were seeing before in iOS 12. And if you go into the display and text size here, and then you go into um, the auto brightness, that is where you will control the auto brightness. So um, everything is pretty much the same with the accessibility menu. It has just been moved to the main page here for iOS 13. Now let's go over to the wallpaper menu because we have a lot of different changes and you can see that we do have an added option at the bottom here where it says dark appearance dims wallpaper. So it actually, um, when you go to the dark theme, it will dim the wallpaper in the background, uh, especially for that uh, dark theme selection. So that's really cool. And then it does have a kind of um, added uh, infographic or info on the bottom there just showing you exactly or telling you exactly what will happen when that option is selected for the dark appearance um, dims wallpaper option. Now, if we go into choose a new wallpaper, you can see that we do have a lot more still options here. Uh, so we have four new wallpapers at the top. Um, those will be uh, really, really awesome to see in iOS 13. I really love the colors of all of these options. So definitely go ahead and check it out. We have that orange theme, this blue theme, we have a green theme here, and then we do have a, a kind of gray darkish theme here as well. And all of these actually have uh, counterparts. So you're seeing kind of a split view down the middle of what it would look like in a light theme. And then on the right will be the dark theme. So you can see exactly how it would look in both themes. And I personally believe that all of them look absolutely fantastic in both light and dark themes respectively. Now, if you go through this menu, you'll see that everything is kind of arranged in a different manner than what it was in iOS 12. Just a small change, no other added wallpapers and none removed either. Now, if we go into the battery menu, I can't really show you the differences, but you can clearly see that we do have a very different UI change here to uh, the battery menu. So you can go ahead and select uh, what you want to see the last 24 hours or another option will be seven day options as well. Uh, but it has a lot more of a modern UI to the battery uh, menu here and kind of seeing exactly um, what you're 
kind of using all of your battery on in the background or um, all of your activity as well. So this, this looks absolutely amazing. And then if you go into the battery health menu, you can see that everything has pretty much remained the same, but on the bottom here, we have the added option for optimized battery charging. Now, optimized battery charging is basically um, the effort to reduce battery aging. And essentially the iPhone uh, learns from your daily charging routine so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you actually need it. Now this will only take effect uh, when you are charging at nighttime and you'll see special prompts for the optimized battery charging when you first turn it on and uh, that will smartly charge your phone accordingly at night. So that's a very cool option there. Apple is definitely wanting to keep uh, your battery aging to a minimum and that is an added option to help that cause. Now, if we go into the privacy menu, uh, you can see that we do have a few subtle changes here. So we have the added option of files and folders on the right here with iOS 13, and also the motion and fitness icon has changed from uh, that orange icon with the kind of four stripes to a running person on a green background um, on the right here in iOS 13. Now, if we go into location services, uh, you can see that we do have an added option here for location alerts. So um, essentially that will show map in location alerts. Um, that will just be another option here for location alerts. And then we actually have a little bit more information at the bottom here, um, a little bit more text than what we had in iOS 12. And that says location, location services settings also apply to your Apple Watch. So it's just a prompt to show you um, that if you have an Apple Watch, it will be applied to there as well for the mirroring option of settings. Now, if we go to the system services uh, menu located in the location services menu, uh, you can see that we do have added options here as well. So go ahead, check those out, and you can kind of turn them on or off accordingly to your liking. Now in the iTunes and App Store menu, we have a few different changes here. You can see that uh, menus have definitely changed. There's added menus as well. Uh, so if we go into the app downloads menu, it now will give you options to always allow app downloads, ask if it's over 200 megabytes, and then always ask. Uh, so I have it set to always ask if over 200 megabytes, but you can go ahead and select whichever option you want to, but that is definitely an added option here in iOS 13. Now, if we go into the phone uh, menu here in the settings app, you now have the added option for silencing unknown callers. And that basically means that calls from unknown numbers will be silenced and sent to voicemail and uh, displayed on the recent list. It won't actually come up on your phone. Uh, so you won't be getting those calls on your device. You will only be getting calls from your contacts. This can be a good and bad thing, uh, depending on how many people you have calling that are outside of your contacts but you can go ahead and uh, kind of select that option according to your needs. Now, Apple will be adding another feature, another phone feature for spam call detection in the near future. So that will likely kind of um, replace or trump the silence unknown callers, but this is just an option for now in the meantime until that feature comes. Now in the messages uh, menu in the settings app, you can see that we do have under message filtering, uh, filter unknown senders on the left with iOS 12 and now it's unknown and spam. Uh, so you can go ahead and have this added option if you have SMS filtering um, or you can do the iMessage filtering as well, but just a very slight change in the uh, kind of menu options that you have within the messages uh, settings app. Uh, menu. So definitely check that out if you want to go ahead and uh, filter um, any messages via other apps. But let's go ahead and check out some of our other changes that we saw. And we saw a major change in the FaceTime app. Now, as you can see in the FaceTime menu, uh, blocked has been changed to block contacts here under the calls menu. Very subtle change here in the FaceTime uh, menu, but that is the only change that we saw uh, through the FaceTime menu on iOS 13. Now, if you go to the compass menu, you can see that we do have a new option for uh, location. So you can go into that menu and select um, your access for the location services. Uh, but that's the only change that has been made to iOS 13. 
Now, if we go into the Safari menu here in the settings app, you can see that we have added uh, language support services at the top. And if we scroll down, we have a new tabs menu here. So you have uh, more selection over what goes on uh, with your tabs. Um, it was previously on uh, this menu here, the general menu, but Apple has actually split that up and added a few more options there. And then towards the bottom, we have the added settings for websites specifically, um, that menu as well. So you have a lot more menu options here in the Safari uh, kind of menu here in the settings app. And if we go to advanced, uh, we actually have a new option here. It's remote automation. So you can go ahead and turn that on. That is for developers. So I wouldn't really turn it on unless you know what you're doing. But if you go into experimental features, you can see that there's more options as well. Of course, this is just for developers. So you don't really need to pay attention to this. Um, this is you know, specifically for people who know exactly what these terms are and what they're doing. So uh, definitely don't kind of mess with these if you don't know what you're doing. I just want to show you that there are added options for any of you guys who may know what these menu options are. Now at the bottom of the menu here, you can see that we have new options for the health app and the shortcuts app as well um, as kind of more settings uh, menu options for those specific apps. They were not previously seen in iOS 12. Now, the last thing we'll check out is the music menu. And basically there's just one added small option here and that is show all purchases. Uh, you can toggle that on or off to show all of your purchases that have been made through Apple Music. Okay, so we are on the home menu for iOS 12 and iOS 13 here, and things look very similar, but they are definitely different if we dive into kind of the overall UI changes that have been made for iOS 13. So if you 3D or haptic touch an icon now, you actually get a very different looking menu, and you actually have added options as well. So uh, you can see that the menu has gotten a little bit smaller, and the overall translucent look of it has definitely changed, uh, but we also have the added option of re ranging apps. So uh, that will put you into that kind of wiggly app um, kind of setting where you can go ahead and move your apps, delete them from your homepage and all of that. Um, you can also hold down um, on the uh, app icon as well to activate that. So that's kind of like two ways you can go ahead and uh, kind of do that. Or you can go ahead and just start dragging the icon and that will put you into that mode as well. So there's really three options to get into that rearrange app um, mode. And I personally love all of those new options compared to what we had before. And this new looking menu here does look really, really nice for iOS 13. Let me know your thoughts on this change in the comment section down below. Now, if we go into the widgets page, we have a very, very different looking widgets page. Uh, things just look a lot more modern here on the right hand side, specifically with iOS 13. And the screen time menu can now actually expand. So you have uh, more information available to you in the screen time widget. Uh, if you kind of go ahead, went ahead and tapped on the screen time widget before in iOS 12, it would just send you to uh, the overall menu option in the settings app, which was kind of um, hectic. And now you get all that information directly on your widget page. And the same goes for um, the weather app. You can see that I just tapped on show more, uh, but with the weather app here, it actually looks a whole lot nicer. So I'm really loving this change to the widget page on iOS 13. Um, it looks a lot more modern and a lot more streamlined uh, for the overall look of a very modern looking UI. Now, if we go ahead and uh, change the volume on our um, iOS 12 here, you can see that we do have a volume indication there right in the middle. But if we go ahead and change it on iOS 13, you can see that the ringer uh, switch option comes up at the top there. It's a lot different than what we were seeing in iOS 12. Now, if we go ahead and start playing some music here, um, you can see that um, our options will change. So um, our switch on the right hand or on the left hand side here will definitely change. And you, you can see that we actually have the option to um, slide up and down this menu for the new volume control UI with our finger. So you can do that with buttons or your finger and it has a little bit more stops than what we were seeing in iOS 12. So um, these icons will change 
uh, based upon if you're using like a HomePod or um, maybe a um, Bluetooth speaker or anything like that, those icons will change accordingly. And we'll kind of go over that right now. So let's go ahead and check out the control center. Um, we'll kind of show you that in just a second, the uh, different kind of uh, options for the icons for the um, volume UI, but first, Let's check out a huge improvement made in iOS 13 versus iOS 12. So previously, uh, this menu would uh, not be as kind of uh, forgiving for your options. So you now have the option to expand these uh, communication toggle menus uh, to go ahead and select different Wi-Fi's. Uh, you can go ahead and select different Bluetooth options as well. So that's really cool. AirDrop has um, a menu itself, which it did before, but this is really, really cool. You can go ahead and switch Wi-Fi directly from the control center. Unfortunately here, uh, this will not permanently turn off Wi-Fi. That is still not an option here, but you can go ahead and um, expand these menus and change Wi-Fi or Bluetooth options. Now, as you saw at the bottom, this also has an option to go to Wi-Fi settings. That is something that we didn't have before. And the same goes for the Bluetooth option as well. You can go into the Bluetooth settings directly from the control center there as well through the uh, communication bubble here. Um, on the top left hand corner. So definitely check that out. There's a lot more uh, kind of expansive options for this menu than what we were seeing in iOS 12 and a lot of people are definitely appreciating uh, those expanded options. Now, if we expand the music toggle here or the music bubble, uh, you can see that if we expand this menu here, uh, we now have separate uh, kind of categories uh, in iOS 13. So speakers and TVs. And if I go ahead and connect my um, Bluetooth speaker um, headphones or my Bluetooth headphones, uh, my Beats, uh, you can see that they're in their own um, headphone category as well. And if we go to the next uh, menu option here, you can actually have the ability to share audio. So that's really cool as well. Now, another very small change here is for our Beats Studio 3 wireless headphones on the left, you can see that we just have a Bluetooth icon here, a very basic Bluetooth icon there on the left-hand side. And on the right, we actually have that full UI for the Beats Studio headphones. So that looks really cool. This is only specific to um, the Apple kind of headphones that are made by Apple. So any Beats products or maybe AirPods or anything like that, um, that will only be relevant to those specific headphones. Now let's back out of that and check out some of the other changes that have been made here. And if we go into the brightness menu option, uh, you can see that we have the added option for a dark mode toggle. So you can go ahead and switch to dark mode directly through that option there. That's really cool. And um, it changes very quickly the uh, kind of transition in the background there looks very, very nice. Now, if you go into the um, volume switcher here, you can see that uh, we do have the volume UI in the uh, center here. Um, that has been moved from where it was in iOS 12. And now that has been re been replaced with what device we are connected to. So as you can see, we have uh, Beats Studio 3 um, headphones and specific to those headphones, since they have noise cancella uh, cancellation technology, uh, we have noise cancellation. We can select that on or we can turn it off all through this volume toggle. So that is really, really cool. You can not do that at all um, in iOS 12, but now with iOS 13, that adds that functionality. Now, if we go ahead and connect to our um, HomePod here, and then go into that menu, you can see that it shows exactly what we are controlling the volume for uh, directly through uh, that volume toggle there. Now let's go ahead and check out some of the different menu options here. Um, if we open up the camera menu option, you can see that uh, the icons have changed very subtly here uh, with the difference of iOS 12 versus iOS 13. We no longer have the scan QR code option here um, because the scan QR code option in iOS 13 does not actually open the camera app anymore. Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a second. If we go into the notes, uh, kind of its expanded menu here, you can see see that uh, the icons have changed very subtly here and uh, they are actually a little bit smaller in uh, the menu on iOS 13. 
Now let's go ahead and check out the calculator as well. Uh, you can see that the icons have changed just a little bit between iOS 13 and iOS 12. And if we go into the remote app, you can see that swipe to navigate uh, kind of appears when we open up uh, that, that remote app. Um, so if we go into the scan QR code option, you can see that um, on the right here, it opens its own UI for iOS 13, but on the left with iOS 12, it's opening up the camera app itself. So we have a very different UI experience for the QR code scanner in iOS 13. Um, I personally believe it looks a whole lot better. And then of course, the last thing that we have is the dark mode um, kind of activation toggle here. So there's really a lot of ways you can go ahead and activate or deactivate dark mode um, in iOS 13. And that's just one added option there in the control center. Now in the messages app, we have a very different looking uh, kind of top menu here. So the uh, compose menu has been changed and then the edit option here um, has been changed as well. Uh, so you can go ahead and check that out, but very different look to um, the messages app uh, initially here. And if we go ahead and compose a message, uh, you can see that things are just looking slightly different between iOS 12 and iOS 13. At the bottom right hand corner, we have a different UI for the uh, microphone. So that has changed to kind of a more filled in look, but also the entire icon has changed as well. Now, if we go into the uh, emoji and animoji menus, uh, you can see that there are definitely um, some very very subtle changes to the different menus, uh, but you have an audit option of uh, different an emoji. So we have a new mouse, um, a little octopus here, and then we also have a cow. So those are three new options that we're seeing here in iOS 13 versus what we we're seeing in iOS 12. Now, a big uh, change that has been made to iOS uh, 13 versus what we are seeing in iOS 12 is if you go into the Memoji customization option menu, you can see that there's a whole lot more options uh, in iOS 13 versus what we are seeing in iOS 12. So you can really get uh, creative in iOS 13 uh, with your hair options, your skin options, um, all of your options uh, for Memoji, you have a lot more free reign um, with iOS 13 versus what you were having in iOS 12. So definitely go ahead and check those changes out. I personally believe Apple is doing a fantastic job with these and it's making things a lot more fun with Memoji to go ahead and have all these customization options, especially if you're running uh, many different uh, Memojis. So let's go ahead and back out of this menu and check out another really cool Memoji and Emoji feature, and that is the Memoji sticker. So if you go ahead and uh, select this option, these sticker pack options in iOS 13, this is something only specific to iOS 13. You can go ahead and get sticker options uh, for your customized Memojis or you can go ahead and get them for any Animoji that is available and all the stickers are the same. So it will just uh, take the face or the um, icon there and create your own stickers that you can go ahead and send in iMessages and they also work in other applications as well. I use them all the time. I actually use the stickers more than the Animoji option um, where you record something and people love the stickers. So definitely no, let me know what your thoughts are on those sticker options. I personally love them in the messages app. Now, if we go into the phone app, we have a very subtle difference here. Uh, the call icon has changed just like we saw in that cellular menu. Um, the shade of green has definitely changed to something a little bit darker. Um, so that's a very subtle change there. And then at the bottom, the icon for the contacts has changed to reflect the new icon that we're seeing for the contacts app here in iOS 13. So very small changes here in uh, the phone app. Um, but I actually personally love these changes and I I think that the more bold option for the uh, kind of call button there and the darker option is just to save on battery life. Um, Apple is using a lot less uh, kind of bold colors here in iOS 13 just to save on battery life just that little bit further. Now in the Maps app, you're actually going to start seeing a lot more details. So if you go um, into the new Maps app and go to maybe larger cities, um, even smaller ones as well, you'll just be seeing a lot more detail um, for the Maps app 
and I really, really love these changes. So if you go to a place like Los Angeles, you'll be seeing a lot more detail, especially around parks um, and different uh, areas where you'll see just a lot more um, kind of rural detail as to how everything lays out. So definitely check that out. And then you'll have the street view option for very uh, select cities as well in the Maps app. And if we go and swipe up, you'll see that we have a new favorites menu here at the bottom. So you can have a uh, different favorites, home, work, school, you can actually add your own and select your own icon as well. So that's really cool. And then you can also have collection menus as well. So uh, different collections of places that you've been to. Um, this is definitely a lot better than what we were seeing before. And it gives you a lot more options uh, when kind of going to very similar places and you just want to have a, a very quick um, kind of destination or maps um, experience. Uh, versus you know having to type in the address partially once again you can just create your quick favorite icons or collection of um, you know different places that you typically go to now if we go into the app store we have a very different looking app store here uh, so on the bottom you can see the icons have definitely changed here um, the fourth one from the left has changed from the updates to Apple Arcade so uh, you, I'm definitely sure that you guys have heard of Apple Arcade uh, this is Apple's new subscription service for uh, different games made by many different developers but these are specific to iOS these cannot be played on Android they are specific to the Apple Arcade uh, subscription service uh, so definitely go ahead and check them out. There's a lot of uh, games here and I believe this is available as of um, today, which is uh, September 18th. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Um, we have a lot of games here and more to be added in the near future. And uh, that is a fantastic option. So you might be asking, how do we update our apps now in iOS 13? Well, you'll actually be going to the top right icon here where you'll see your Apple ID. And here you can see all of your apps. So you'll go ahead ahead and swipe down to see any uh, you know apps that you need to update whereas previously you go to that page and swipe down um, but you'll just be doing that all through here so I personally love that new option I think it's a waste to have just a update uh, menu option on the bottom I really love the addition of Apple Arcade but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below um, as far as any other changes made to uh, the uh, App Store none have actually been made everything pretty much looks the same as what we were having before we just have that edition of Apple Arcade. Now, if you go into the Reminders app, you can see that we have a very, very different looking UI here, and it looks so much better, a much improved Reminders app. Uh, you can see that the uh, menus here are definitely looking a lot more modern. If I go and add a task, I have a lot more options uh, when you know creating that reminder. So I'll just type in milk here. Um, we can go ahead and do that by location. So that's really cool. I can flag it to um, you know make sure that it's important or not. Um, I can go ahead Head, scan a document to attach it to that reminder. I can attach a photo or take a photo um, to attach to that reminder, or I can select the time of day as to when it reminds me. So today, tomorrow, this weekend, or I can do a custom option as well. This is something that we had before, but the uh, kind of overall look of it was definitely not to um, the standard of what we have now. So this looks absolutely amazing. Apple has done a fantastic job with the Reminders app, and I'm loving the brand new UI here that we're seeing for the Reminders app in iOS 13. Now, if we open up the health app here for iOS 13, you can see that we have a very different change. Apple has kind of removed some menu options there at the bottom and have changed it with the summary option and browse options. So you can go ahead and browse through all the different categories that you have uh, for uh, the health app. Those have uh, pretty much remained the same. There's a few more options for cycle tracking and uh, mindfulness and everything like that. Um, so there's a few more options there, but if you go into summary, you can actually see all of your favorites um, listed here. So we have noise notifications, that's new for the Apple Watch. Uh, so that is showing up there. And then we have um, our different kind of favorite options here at our very front page. So definitely take a look at all of this. It looks a lot more modern and nice than what we were seeing before. And um, if you go ahead and select your Apple ID icon, you can get your medical ID there on the health app. Now, if we go ahead and open up the home app, you can see that we have a very similar looking uh, kind of app here to what we were seeing before in iOS 12. If you go into automation, things are, are looking 
looking just a little bit more modern here in iOS 13, uh, just a very subtle change there. But if you go into the main menu option here, um, to at, at the left hand corner, uh, you can see that we do have um, hubs and bridges that has been added there. And then if you go into the wallpapers, you can see that we have added options there. So we actually have six new wallpaper options here on the right hand side. Um, but you also can see that the older uh, wallpaper options have been saved, but we have six brand new ones and they look absolutely amazing. So go ahead and select um, which one you want. Uh, they don't really match what we're seeing in iOS 13, but they kind of do uh, present a very nice style um, to what we should be seeing in a uh, kind of like updated UI for the home app. So definitely go ahead and check out the new wallpapers in the home app there in iOS 13. One other change is at the very bottom, the remove home has been moved from the center here to the left hand side. Not really sure why they made that change, but they have made it. And then the uh, kind of borders here are all rounded, just like what we're seeing across iOS 13. Everything is kind of rounded and pushed towards the center. Uh, so it's very well outlined versus what we're seeing a very boxy theme here in iOS 12. Now, if we go ahead and open up the wallet app here, uh, you can see that pretty much everything has remained the same. But if we go to the bottom, the edit passes has been changed uh, from that very boxy looking um, uh, theme to a more uh, translucent theme here uh, with a kind of bold text on the edit passes very minor change here in the wallet app. Now let's go ahead and go on to the next app, which is definitely one that you guys will want to check out. It's the Find My iPhone app has been changed to Find My. And the first thing that you'll notice is we have a brand new uh, app icon here, which looks a lot different than what we were seeing in iOS 12. Now, if you go into the Find My app and compare it to what we were seeing before, you have a lot different of a feel here uh, to the Find My app. Things are definitely looking a lot better. And the Find My Friends has also been integrated into the Find My app. So you can go ahead and share your location with different friends and family members directly through this app as well. Uh, you can allow friend requests there too and receive location updates for people that you share your location with or with people that are sharing their own personal location with you. Now the devices tag looks just a little bit different than what we were seeing before. Um, looks a little bit more modern, but if we go into um, the same menu here, you can see that um, things are looking definitely different than what we were seeing in iOS 12. So the icons have been updated. Uh, we have a new play sound icon, directions to that location, a uh, different icon there, and then notifications as well. And we can also mark as lost, and we have different options to erase this device or remove this device. So um, a lot more functionality here within the Find My app when going about um, any actions for specific devices. Now, if you go ahead and open up the Tips app, everything has been updated for iOS 13. And um, also we have an updated UI for the new iPhone 11 lineup. So you can go ahead and check that out if you are into the tips, um, but we have new options for the Apple Watch as well. And some things have been rearranged here for um, iOS 13. Previously, we're seeing a little bit more tips um, for the HomePod, but it looks like we're not seeing that here, um, but there are definitely some additions and this is basically what Apple is focusing on now versus what they're focusing on in iOS 12. So uh, definitely check out the tips app. There's a lot of useful information here and this is kind of Apple's go-to place for um, figuring out what to do on your iPhone if you need any help whatsoever. Now, uh, I did say this previously, but we have a new contacts app. So um, it has actually been changed from uh, the two people, which were identified as male and female to kind of an unidentified uh, a bull, uh, sex. So it's neither male nor female. And I'm assuming Apple just wants to be gender neutral with that icon uh, because they didn't really change a lot of the app icons here. So um, a very subtle change here. Um, we basically have the same icon. It's just that uh, the person has been changed to kind of an unidentifiable, unidentifiable sex um, on the app icon. So a very subtle change there in iOS 13. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the Stocks app because we've definitely seen a big change here to the Stocks app. Um, the UI has been revamped here. Uh, so you can go ahead and um, you know have the search bar at the top. That has been changed from a more dark theme UI here to a uh, kind of lighter themed uh, UI to kind of mix more with the um, 
the dark theme that is going on with iOS 13. Uh, you can see that at the bottom, you can see Apple News um, and then the Apple News logo, but that has been changed here in iOS 13 from the Apple logo and then News. So that has been changed to kind of reflect that change respectively in the Apple News um, app. Now, if you go into the calculator, you can actually see that the color is a little bit less vibrant on iOS 13. And a lot of people are asking why this is. It's actually to save on battery life. Um, this is an effort to save um, battery life, uh, not really having to light up the um, panel as much with that OLED panel. So uh, colors will just look a little bit less vibrant here in iOS 13. A lot of people have a big problem with this. So uh, we'll definitely stay tuned and see if Apple changes it back to those more rich colors, but so far uh, throughout the entire beta process, things have been looking a little bit more dull as far as colors go on iOS 13. Now, if we go into the clock app, you can see that things have uh, changed just a little bit here um, with the world clock. So um, the world clock uh, kind of title there was at the top and now it's um, kind of on the top left-hand corner here in iOS 13 to, to kind of reflect the overall menu style uh, with all of the apps and uh, the settings app as well. Uh, if we go into the bedtime menu, you can see that things have definitely changed here, a different looking UI. And uh, you can see if we go towards the bottom, um, more history will take us to the um, the health app there, um, but this is just saying show more and health on the right in iOS 13, and it's giving us uh, kind of just the graph there, and it takes out this entire um, kind of circle UI there. So a very different look here in the um, in the clock app. Now, if we go to the timer on the uh, far right-hand side here, things have just been rearranged and changed to that more round-looking UI, but not too many changes here in the Clocks app, just a few UI changes here and there. Now, if we open up Safari, you can see that we have a very different looking uh, page here for all of our favorites. So um, the icons are just a little bit more rounded edges here. Um, I really like this change. And uh, on the bottom section here, the icons are getting a little bit smaller, a little bit more clean looking. So uh, definitely a good change here for um, the, the Safari app. Now, if you go ahead and start searching something, so let's go ahead and um, do PI, um, you can see that we have uh, different uh, kind of options here. So on the left, we had those blue arrows and now on the right, they're gray. Um, so definitely a different look here to the search um, experience. And uh, the search experience is a little bit better on iOS 13. It's a little bit smarter. The AI is working a lot better and the searches are just a lot faster here in iOS 13. As you can also see on the bottom right hand corner, as you saw in other applications as well, uh, the kind of microphone icon there has definitely changed. Now, another change that has been made to the Safari app is if you go ahead and uh, tap on the tabs menu here, um, you can see that things are moving in just a little bit differently. Um, so the animation is just slightly different um, between the two, um, but those are pretty much all of the changes that you're seeing within the Safari app. Now, another one that you're seeing um, is uh, if you go into a specific website here, uh, you now have the added option here on the top left-hand corner um, for all of um, your options to do with uh, increasing text size on um, that specific page. You can go ahead, hide the toolbar, request a desktop website, and you have website settings all through that menu option there. So that's an added option and definitely one that people were looking for in iOS 13 versus uh, that was not an option in iOS 12. Now, if you go into the music app, we have a brand new looking um, music UI. So it's definitely a lot better in my opinion. Um, if we go ahead and look at the uh, volume sliders, everything is a little bit more compact here on the right in iOS 13. And then you have this added um, option for lyrics as well. So if you have lyrics, available lyrics, you can go ahead and uh, toggle that option and it will show you the available lyrics. Um, the overall artwork is just a little bit smaller, more compact. And then all the text here is just uh, kind of pushed to the left and divided equally. Um, if you go into this menu here, you can see you're up next, and then you can go ahead and toggle any of the shuffle and uh, replay options as well. Now in the Photos app, you actually have a new added option to edit videos. So here's a video I can go ahead and edit. Um, you can see that this is a um, video that is playing and then I can go ahead and edit this video. So I can go ahead, edit the exposure of the video um, so I can kind of change the um, highlights and shadows. 
um, but then I can also put a kind of theme to it. So if I want to do a vivid warm theme or I can do like um, a dramatic war warm theme, which would make it look more like a kind of, um, you know, war type theme that would look really cool. Um, so I can just change all of the theme options as I would in, uh, you know, regular photos. I can go ahead, click done, and then it will go ahead and play that in that respective theme. So this is a really cool option to go ahead and add uh, different themes and different kind of customization options for um, your videos as well as photos in iOS 13. So a lot better editor experience here um, in the Photos app. Now, one last thing before I go, uh, the edit button on the widget page here in iOS 12 was a little bit more round and now in iOS 13, it's just a little bit um, same, same similar shape. It's definitely rounded, but a little bit more spread out um, than what we were seeing in iOS 12. So guys, those were all of the 100 plus new features and changes found in iOS 13. If you have any comments, questions, or maybe you want to add a feature or UI change, definitely leave those comments in the comment section down below. I'll be sure to take a look at those and get back to you ASAP. I'm really interested to see what your thoughts are and if you guys found any new features and or changes. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like on the video, get subscribed and also hit that bell button to get updates as soon as any of our future content is released. So thank you again for watching. Thank you for watching this very long video, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully we'll be seeing you guys in some upcoming content. Until then, I hope you all are enjoying iOS 13. Peace out guys.